two games it's daytime victories none but at night the Wildcats are one for one it's time to see if Richard Agar's side come alive again under the lights at home as they face an inconsistent Bradford Bull side Agar names an unchanged starting lineup, which is one swap on the bench as Kyle Trout replaces Frankie Mariano so the Wildcats lineup reads Richie Mathers at fullback Peter Fox and Ben Cocaine are the two wingers the two centres Dean Collis and Vince Mellers Isaac John at standoff with Tim Smith at scrum half the two props Oliver Wilkes and Steve Southern with Paul Ayton at hooker second row Danny Kermon and Ali Lawatiti and the loose forward making out the lineup is Danny Washbrook on the uh, interchange bench Kyle Wood Andy Rally, Paul Johnson and the aforementioned Kyle Trout couple of changes for the Bradford Bulls Jeff Walker is out and so is Gail Ben Jeffries the former Wildcat of course comes into the side at scrum half and so does John Bateman in the second row they're the only two changes for the Bulls so they have Brett Kearney at fullback Elliot Keir will be on the right wing with Jason Crooks on the left Michael Platt and Keith Lulia are the centres Jared Summit at standoff Ben Jeffries at scrum half uh, the uh, props Craig Cropjack and uh, Bryn Hargreaves with Matt Diskin at hooker second row John Bateman and Elliot Whitehead Jamie Langley at loose forward on the bench for uh, Mick Potter's side this evening Heath Lestrange, Nick Scruton, Phil Joseph and Tom Burgess and the referee at the Rapid Solicitors Stadium this evening is Ben Thaler and a win tonight would push them well up the table obviously on these early few weeks as the Bulls get things underway Jared Summit with a high looping kick into what is a breezy evening here at the Rapid Solicitors Stadium. Going to be an awkward one for anybody underneath those kicks this evening. And it's the Wildcats who have the first set of six up past the 20. Spreading the ball out to Lawatiti who bounds away from one. Can he get the ball away? He can. And a good start from the Wildcats. Good lively opening as they make their way over halfway in the first set. Crowd wanting a decision as Mathers just held down for a moment as the little kick comes over the top. And it's a foot race for Cocaine and Cocaine might get there first. And he has, has he got the ball down? He has. He's over in the corner in the first seconds of the game. Beautiful little kick over the top. Straight foot race. Cocaine at the pace. And he's put the Wildcats on the board almost straight away. Great start for the home side. Great start for the Wildcats. Play the little pass, but decides instead to keep hold of it. Diskin, Jeffries again, flicks it over the top, and it's caught. Is it held inside? It looks like it is. And it's the Bulls who get the four points on the board and get the equalising try. A little chip over the top. Wildcats, again, just a few metres out. Smith, round the back, looking for Mathers. Nobody coming on the left-hand side, though, for him to spray the ball to. He'll take the tackle on the 10 metre line. Aiton into Southern. Again, he's through. Straight through the line. Seemed to be no space at all. And Southern, but he's gone straight through and put the ball down for the score. The Bulls are furious about something in the line. But the referee shakes his head and points to the floor to give the Wildcats the four points. Can't get to his feet quickly though, but they are able to put on an hit and breaks away. He's got space, he's got support inside him, he's gone out wide to the right hand side instead. Perhaps not the best option in the end. And the pass was wayward. Or clumber off him. The Wildcats look to spread it again with John, but he's lost it this time. He's been intercepted by Elliot Whitehead, and Whitehead will scamper away to score right under the post. The pass inside didn't work. Whitehead was onto it, picked it up and stepped away, and out of nothing, the Bulls find themselves back on track. Finds nowhere to go. And Fox takes the play of the ball inside this time for Danny Kerman. Now then, has he had the Wildcats go through here with Kerman? They have. They looked for a moment like he'd been held up, looked like the play had stopped. But he somehow managed to wriggle his way just free enough to stretch across. As the fans jump up in front of me. <laughs> Difficult to see whether he got the touchdown. But the referee Ben Thaler was there right on the spot. No queries over that one needed to take it upstairs. From Wakefield. Here comes Jeffries for the kick. He'll launch it right footed spinning up under the post. And it's fumbled. And as he got it down. 
There's plenty of people there. And the referee is going to send this one upstairs. The Bulls certainly think that they've got the score. Remains to be seen. We await the decision from the video referee. And the decision is try. As we said, there was that second effort. And the Bulls find themselves on the last tackle just over 10 metres out. Langley onto his feet to allow the strays to play it. Jeffries will know with another one of those little kicks over the top and the Bulls have caught it. And the Bulls have got the scoreline again and taken another four. A little chip over the top yet again. Is concerned. The last tackle for the Bulls. Jeffries yet again with a kick across and he's got it again. Would you believe it? Three kicks across from Jeffries, leading to three tries for the Bradford Bulls. Yet again, almost the same play three times in a row. The little chip over the top from Jeffries, but deep inside their own half again. As Diskin tries to orchestrate things, it comes away for Kearney, and Kearney will score again. Nice little pass out of the back from Bryn Hargreaves doesn't really release things just forces Bradford further inside their own 20 perhaps there's a chance here the Wildcats will step away and the Wildcats will score something back on the uh, back on the board as far as the uh, Wildcats are concerned Richie Mather's taking a whack for his troubles to get the ball over the line but he has put an extra four on the board as far as the Wildcats are concerned we are coming to the final 10 seconds of the game. It'll be the Bulls who will take the victory. And it will be the Brantford Bulls who end up with ball in hand when the hooter goes. And there it is. Brings this game to an end. And after what looked like a, a decent first half, and suddenly a turnaround after half time, it's the Bulls who powered away to take one in the end. Unfortunately, it was a very comfortable victory in that second half.